favorite 3D prints for the RC hobby. Now these prints are specifically for RC planes and model aircraft. Now to start, my favorite prints are these little battery connector covers. This one is for the XT60 connectors and some balance lead holders. These just attach to the cable of the XT60 and then they plug in and it keeps it nice and neat so nothing gets caught in any propellers. Now, when you have all these caps, they tend to go all over the place, like when you're charging or, you know, when you need to fly and plug the connector into your ESC. I like to have places to store these connectors. So on the top of my, of my transmitter, I have this little XT60 holder. And I'll put all the STLs to these, um, all these designs in the link in the description below. And I also have smaller XT30 battery covers. These ones are a little, a little bit sn more snug. And these fit on my other Bugs um, 3 F Force One F100 drone. Because these batteries are for my drone. And again, they have these balance lead connectors, which just connect to the cable. And these ones, these batteries did not come with a uh, little grip on the balance lead like this battery did right here. So I went ahead and 3D printed some and just wrapped some electrical tape around because this is actually two separate parts 3D printed. On my balance charger, and lipo charger, I also have another one of those XT60 holders. Next, uh, I like to print accessories for my transmitters. For this FlySky transmitter, it had a nice uh, loop, um, so you could clip a um, lanyard to it and wear this transmitter from your neck. That was nice, but also, this is my nicer transmitter, it's more expensive, so I'd like to protect the gimbals. So I 3D printed this gimbal protector. It also protects the switches, and it just slides right over, and in the center it just clicks into place around that little loop. And to take it off, just pop it off. Now this one, this transmitter, did not come with a loop, so I designed one in Tinkercad, which is the pretty simple online CAD. And I just 3D printed and hot glued. Hot glue is plenty strong for this application. And so now I can clip this in. Now servo testers are pretty handy tools. You can uh, test your motors and servos. And actually cool trick, because these servo testers often like an input power and an output power. That means that you would have to have an input power BEC to connect to the servo tester, like that, and then an output so you could actually send the signal to your ESC. Now a cool trick that I found is that you can just plug the ESC right into the servo tester itself, and then it'll give signal and power the servo tester so it can give a signal. That's just a cool tip. So a 3D printed accessory for these servo testers are these little cases. As you can see, I have 3D printed a case here and it just makes it easier to glue the servo tester onto, onto things and you still have your one input and your three outputs and it still works fine, it still clicks. And I actually just cut out labels for the inputs and outputs and hot glue them onto here or some super glue or works fine and then 3d print these two parts and then they just glue together i just hot glue them together like this with the servo tester inside and just another favorite 3d print now this is my small parts um organizer box 
and it has my heat shrink and it also contains some of these 3d printed accessories and little little stuff and it also contains some 3d printed accessories so i like this uh this angle bracket was one of my first rc 3d prints it's super strong but also pretty overkill for any small rc project maybe for a bigger one this would be suitable so i also have some smaller brackets which are better for a smaller project if you ever need 90 degree i also 3d printed some right angle squares so if you're ever making a fuselage like a square fuselage you can always check to see if something is square and in this assortment box i have all these motor mounts because when you buy a motor they usually don't include a motor mount or they just include an aluminum one like this but i have a 3d printer so why not just 3d print some motor mounts and i can make them this one i actually designed myself and i can make it custom to accommodate for wires and hole spacing for different types of mounts Here's another one, and you can make it whatever dimension you want. Now on my twin boom pusher, I have a 3D printed motor mount. And one, the base plate, is just hot glued onto the fuselage. And then I have another mount that looks just like, looks just like this one. And it's just screwed on with four screws onto the base mount. So that's just one of the 3D printed accessories on this twin boom pusher plane. This is another motor mount that is on a plane motor. And as you can see, it's just screwed on and it works fine, just as well as a normal aluminum mount. I've never had any issues with these breaking. And if they do break, then your crash must have been pretty hard, and if it didn't break on that hard crash, something else is probably going to be damaged with your propeller or your motor. So the, having a weaker motor mount could be a fail-safe system if you ever get in a crash to save, like, from bending a shaft or something. Now for control linkages and push rods and control horns, for a servos, I like to 3D print my own servo horns. Now, servos, they do come with c control horns, but I just like having 3D printed ones so I can melt a bunch of holes in them and not have to worry about it. And if I ever lose one, I just 3D print some more. Heat up uh, whatever size control push rod you're using and just push it through the plastic and it'll just melt the perfect size hole for your control push rod. I also like 3D printing control horns. This one is pretty big for any plane on a small size. So I just 3D printed a bunch of these uh, control horns. These are similar to the flight test style control horns. As you can see, you just cut a slit in your foam board and then just hot glue it in place and it's plenty strong. On my twin boom pusher plane right here, as you can see the control linkages. I have a 3D printed servo horn and my control push rod and my 3D printed control horn. For control rods, I just like to take a paper clip. They're pretty cheap and you can get them at most most places like craft stores or you know office office stores. So I just like to take a paper clip and just straighten it out. And it's pretty stiff if you if you only have a pretty short control rod. If I have a longer control rod, I'll actually take a bamboo skewer, like on my twin boom, and super glue a little 3D printed adapter. Yeah, as you can see back here, I'll just this is the bamboo skewer, and it's attached to a wire th via an adapter. So I just super glues those together. But for any other application, I just straighten out a paper clip. And normally, if you just wanna use pliers, 
you can do a pretty simple Z-bend. It's a pretty simple Z-bend like that. And this will just go in your, you do one on both sides of your control push rod, and then it just loops in like that and to take it out. So this is a pretty nice solution. But often it's, once you get one side in, it's difficult to get the other side in. Now you could modify the Z-Bend like then you can get a push rod in from the side, or as this is 3D printed RC accessories, alternative solution would just be to put one 90 degree bend. So even if one side of your control horn is linked in, you can just slide this other end just sideways like that as opposed to being pretty finicky if you have two Z bends. So you make a 90 degree bend, slip into the hole of your control horn or your servo horn. You just take one of these, it's a little push rod retainer, and it just goes on that hole right there. And as you can see, it will just snap into place like that. So as you can see, and then you can just unclip that and take it off like that. Now some bonus 3D prints are these Velcro strap um, holders. These are meant for drones, but if you just hot glue these onto a surface, then you can just run your Velcro strap through these around your battery, and then you can strap up your batteries. If you just print multiple of these, you'll always have them around. It's one thing I like about 3D printing. You can print as many as you want, and you'll never run out of them. Now, one of my motor pods for an upcoming flying wing project is this 3D printed motor mount, and this is like a little flight test mighty mini swappable power pack, I guess it's called. And use some XPS foam, little aerodynamic shroud. 3D printing propellers is something I'm um, talked about often on some RC forums. Now, these are all printed in PETG, PETG filament, and it's the orange stuff. And it's a little bit flexible, but it's also, I think, stronger than PLA. PLA is a little bit more brittle, so it might shatter, but these propellers, uh, they either print like this orientation or they print in this orientation. Now, this is a normal standard propeller, 6x3.5 EP prop. And this is a bullnose propeller, 5045 propeller, which I use on my twin boom. Now, what I found with these 3D printed propellers is that you should not print them. They're always just way too unbalanced. They take way too much time to print, and especially with bigger propellers. They have broken every single time I've even landed. So do not print these large propellers. Maybe with a smaller propeller on a drone, they might be fine. But for a plane, I just found that these are way too unbalanced, let alone four of them on a quadcopter. So. Stay away from 3D printed propellers. While it is probably cheaper, it's much easier to just go with a store-bought propeller. These bullnose propellers are super strong. For my twin boom, I've crashed this plane multiple, multiple times. In fact, these wings are not even the original wings because I crashed the other ones so much while I was learning that I had to make some new wings. But this is the same exact propeller. It still is held up through all those crashes. It's perfectly balanced. It's nice and silent. It produces plenty of thrust. And so just buy a store-bought propeller instead of 3D printing one. And of course, the most important 3D print is the Orange Baron himself.
This is a great little design of Woodstock, which is the Red Baron. And you just print them in orange, and then it becomes the Orange Baron.